Shalom Aleichem, peace be upon you. Greetings and welcome to the broadcast. I'm Sean. The website can be found at scriptureandprophecy.com. That's where you go to find the archives, and that's where you go to support this mission of truth. Today we are looking at this week's Torah portion, Torah Parsha, Ki Tavo or Ki Savo. Let me read you a brief little description here. Uh, this, uh, by the way, this is Deuteronomy chapter 26 through Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 8. Here's what the summary says if you go to TorahPortions.org. Deuteronomy 26 begins the 15th reading from the Torah with the words, Then it shall be, when you enter into the land of the Lord your God, gives you as an inheritance. In Hebrew, the words for when you enter is ki tavo. This Torah portion begins with the laws regarding the first fruits and tithes, and it goes on to dis discuss the covenant renewal, after which Moses recites the blessings guaranteed to Israel for covenant obedience and warns of the curses for apostasy. So if you haven't figured it out yet, you probably know why I decided to do the Torah Parsha for this week. The warnings for disobedience and the blessings for, dis for, for obedience, I, th I just think is extremely important and, and timely for us today. And what's alarming is if you look at all the warnings against disobedience, which we will see, uh, you can't help but uh, see the world we're living in today, and specifically, I, I'm thinking of the United States of America, how we have turned away from God and we are reaping the very curses that are listed in this, uh, in, chapter, in chapter 28. Also, we have chapter 27, which deals with the, in Jewish tradition, known as the 12 secret curses. Uh, we'll look at those uh, here in a minute also. Today I'm actually going to read from the Kamash uh, to do our Torah portion for this morning. If you don't know what that is, it's a it's basic, it's a Jewish book, uh, but it has all the Torah portions broken up into their separate Parshas. Um, and it has Hebrew on one side and the English text on the other side. If I remember, I'll try to take a picture of it, and and so those of you who are listening to this uh, via YouTube can see see what it looks like. Last thing, the Torah portion schedule starts over at the beginning of October. Two years ago, we went through the whole schedule, and we spent the whole year working through it. We didn't do it this year. I'm considering, Lord willing doing it again this year if that's something that you would like to see uh, please let me know about that in the comments or on Facebook or something like that and let me know that you would like to see that uh, I'll just share with you something that I've thought about doing but would be a huge massive uh, pile of work that I don't know that I could handle taking on I've thought about because I've always wished that there was a Christian version of of this, what I'm getting ready to read from, where the portions are broken up in a book, so you you read through the actual schedule with commentary. It'd be a it'd be a massive undertaking, but it's something I've thought about creating. But anyway, if you'd like to at least see us work through the Torah portions again uh, for this coming calendar, uh, let me know. In the comments. All right, we've burned enough time. Let's take a look at this week's Porsche. Ki Tavo or Ki Savo and uh, see what the word has to say. Um, you will hear me say the Lord, uh, whereas in this Jewish text it says Hashim, which means the name. So the Jews replace God's name with Hashim, the Christians replace it with the Lord. But if you accidentally hear, if you hear me accidentally say Hashem, it means the name. It just is because I failed to to convert that as I was reading. All right, enough rambling. Let's begin 
Parsha Ki Savo, Deuteronomy chapter 26 through 29, verse 8. Let's begin. It will be when you enter the land that the Lord your God gives you as an inheritance, and you possess it and dwell in it, that you shall take of the first fruit of the fruit of the ground that you bring in from your land that the Lord your God gives you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose to make his name rest there. You shall come to whoever will be the Kohen in those days, and you shall say to him, I declare today, the Lord your God, that I have come to the land that the Lord swore to our forefathers to give us. The Kohen shall take the basket from your hand and lay it before the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall call out and say before the Lord your God, An Armenian tried to destroy my forefather. He descended to Egypt and sojourned there, few in number. And there he became a nation, a great, strong, and numerous. The Egyptians mistreated us and afflicted us and placed hard work upon us. Then we cried to the Lord, the God of our forefathers. And the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our travail, and our oppression. The Lord took us out of Egypt with a strong hand and with an outstretched arm, with great awesomeness, and with signs and with wonders. He brought us to the place, and He gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now behold, we have brought the first fruit of the ground that you have given me, O Lord. And you shall lay it before the Lord your God. And you shall prostrate yourself before the Lord your God. You shall rejoice with all goodness that the Lord your God has given you and your household. You and the Levite and the proselyte who is in your midst. Please note this whole thing about the first fruits and tithes. It's, it's more than just be obedient um, it's more than just understand that everything that you have is actually God's, and so you bring the first fruits. Look at how the, the, the sentence ends here. Verse 11, You shall rejoice with all goodness that the Lord your God has given you and your household, you and the Levite and the proselyte that is in your midst. It's also about being thankful. You know, he, they're commanded to recite you know, what had happened. I, I was in this predicament. We were in Egypt, we were in bondage, and you brought us out with a strong hand, and now we're living in blessing. Now we're living in abundance. And so we're bringing the first fruit before you. And our attitude and our mindset is that of rejoicing and being thankful for all that you have given us. It's important. A lot of us today in comparison to past history, in comparison to a lot of the world, you're, you have a lot to be thankful for. Let's continue. Verse 12. When you will finish lifting every tithe of your produce in the third year, in the year of the tithe, you shall give it to the Levite, and the proselyte, and to the orphan, and to the widow, and they shall eat in your cities and be satisfied. And you shall say before the Lord your God, I have removed the holy things from the house, and I have also given to the Levite, to the proselyte, to the orphan, and to the widow, according to all the commandments that you commanded me. I have not trans transgressed any of your commandments, and I have not forgotten I have not eaten of any of it in my intense mourning. I did not consume it in the state of contamination, and I did not give it for the needs of the dead. I have hearkened to the voice of the Lord my God. I have acted according to everything you commanded me. Gaze down from your holy abode, from the heavens, and bless your people Israel and the ground that you gave us, as you swore to our forefathers a land flowing with milk and honey. This day the Lord your God commands you to perform these decrees and the statutes, and you shall observe and perform them with all your heart and with all your soul. You have distinguished the Lord today to be a God for you, and to walk in His ways, and to observe His decrees, His commandments, His statutes, and to hearken to His voice. 
And the Lord has distinguished you today to be for him a treasured people. As he spoke to you and to observe all his commandments and to make you supreme over all the nations that he made for praise, for renown, for splendor. And so that you will be a holy people to the Lord your God as he spoke. Chapter 27. Moses and the elders of Israel commanded the people, saying, Observe the entire commandment that I command you this day. It shall be on the day that you cross the Jordan to the land your God, the Lord your God gives you. You shall set up great stones, and you shall coat them with plaster. You shall inscribe on them all the words of this Torah when you cross over, so that you may enter the land that the Lord your God gives you, a land flowing with milk and honey. And as the Lord your God of your, far, of your forefathers spoke about you. It shall be that when you cross the Jordan, you shall erect these stones, of which I commanded you today, on Mount Ebal, and you shall coat them with plaster. There you shall build an altar for the Lord your God, an altar of stones. You shall not raise iron upon them. Of whole stones shall you build the altar of the Lord your God, and you shall bring upon it elevation offerings to the Lord your God, you shall slaughter peace offerings and eat thereof, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God. You shall inscribe on the stones all the words of this Torah, well clarified. Moses and the Kohanim, the Levites, spoke to all Israel, saying, Be attentive and hear, O Israel. This day you have become a people to the Lord your God. You shall hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and you shall perform his commandments and his decrees which I have commanded you today. Moses commanded the people on that day, saying, These shall stand to bless the people on Mount Gerizim, which you have crossed the Jordan, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Ishkar, Joseph, and Benjamin. And all these shall stand for the curse on Mount Ebal, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zublan, Dan, and Naphtali. The Levite shall speak up and say to every man of Israel in a loud voice, Accursed is the man who will make a graven image or a molten image, an abomination of the Lord, a craftsman's handiwork, and emplace it in secret. And the entire people shall speak up saying, Amen. Accursed is the one who decree, this degrades his father or mother. And the entire people shall say, Amen. Accursed is the one who moves the boundary of his fellow. And the entire people shall say, Amen. Accursed is the one who causes a blind person to go astray on the road. And the entire people shall say, Amen. Accursed is the one who perverts judgment of a proselyte, orphan, or widow. And the entire people shall say, Amen. Accursed is the one who lies with the wife of his father. For we will have uncovered the robe of his father. And the entire people shall say, Amen. A curse is the one who lies with any animal. And the entire people shall say, Amen. A curse is the one who lies with his sister, the daughters of his father or the daughters of his mother. And the entire people shall say, Amen. A curse is the one who lies with his mother-in-law. And the entire people shall say, Amen. A curse is the one who strikes his fellow stealthily. And the entire people shall say, Amen. A curse is the one who takes a bribe to kill a person of innocent blood. And the entire people shall say, Amen. A curse is the one who will not uphold the words of this Torah to perform them. And the entire people shall say, Amen. So right there, please note, we end chapter 7 with the 12 curses, or in some Jewish traditions known as the 12 secret curses. The reason why they're called the 12 secret curses is because they're all sins that kind of take place in secret or in a deceptive manner. I mean, look at the very, uh, let's look at the very first one. A curse is the man who makes a graven image, graven or molten image, an abomination of the Lord, and then places it in secret, right? Like he makes this idol, it's in secret, he's worshiping it in secret. And then is that curse is the one who causes a blind person to go astray, right? Like it's like a form of deception. The blind person doesn't even see, doesn't even know what you're doing. 
Or how about a judge who perverts judgment? And then all these, you have all these sexual curses, you know, like lying with an animal, lying with a sister, lying with your father's wife. Uh, all these things are kind of things that take place in the dark. Just showing that God cannot stand deceptive behavior, doing evil in the dark. God sees what's being done, even when it's covered up. And then the last curse is a curse is the one who will not uphold the words of this Torah to perform them. And the people shall say, Amen. And now we're getting ready to read chapter 28, which deals with the blessings and the cursings. You're blessed if you walk in obedience. You're cursed if you walk in apostasy. Let's take a look. Let's open up our hearts and see what this has to say for us this morning. Deuteronomy chapter 28. And it shall be that if you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God to observe and perform all his commandments that I commanded you this day, then the Lord your God will make you supreme over all the nations of the earth. All these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall you be, blessed shall be the fruit of, the, of your womb, and the fruit of the ground, and the fruit of your animals, and the offspring of your cattle, and the flocks of your sheep and goats. Blessed shall be your fruit basket, your kneading bowl. Blessed shall be you when you come in, and blessed shall be you when you go out. The Lord shall cause your enemies who rise up against you to be struck down before you. On the road they will go out towards you, and on seven roads will they flee before you. The Lord will command the blessings for you and for your storehouses. Your every undertaking, he will bless you in the land that the Lord your God gives you. The Lord will confirm you for himself as a holy people. He swore it to you if you observe the commandments of the Lord your God and you go in his ways. Then all the people of the earth will see that the name of the Lord is proclaimed over you, and they will, they will revere you. The Lord shall give you bountiful goodness in the fruit of your womb, and in the fruit of your animals, and in the fruit of your ground. And on that ground, the Lord swore to your forefathers to give you. The Lord shall open for you his storehouses of goodness, the heavens to provide rain for your land in its time, and to bless all your handiwork. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. The Lord shall place you as a head and not as a tail. You shall be only above you and shall not be below, if you hearken to the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today to observe and to perform, and you do not turn away from any of the words that I command you this day, right or left to follow the gods of others or to worship them so here we have a list of all the blessings if you walk in the ways of God if you walk in obedience to his commandments then everything you touch is going to be blessed your you know the crops are going to be blessed the animals are going to be blessed the womb is going to be blessed I mean you're going to produce more of you Everything you do will be blessed. Your enemies will rise up against you, but then they'll scatter on seven roads. Like they won't even make it to you. That's the promise given to Israel. If they would just walk in his ways, they would just listen. If they would just hearken to his voice and be a set-apart holy people. Now listen to what happens if they walk in apostasy. Oh, one of the other things is that they will not be they will not be borrowers, instead they'll be the lender, right? Now look, verse fifteen. But it will be that if you do not hearken to the voice of the Lord your God to observe to perform all his commandments and his decrees that I commanded you today, then all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. A curse will be you will be you in the city, and a curse will be you in the field. A curse will be your fruit basket and your kneading bowl. A curse will be the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground, the offspring of your cattle and the flocks of your sheep and goats. Accursed 
will you be when you come in and a curse will you be when you go out. The Lord will send in your midst attrition, confusion, and worry. In your every undertaking that you will do until you are destroyed and until you quickly perish because of the evil of your deeds for having forsaken me. The Lord will attach the plagues to you until it consumes you from upon the ground to which you are coming to possess it. The Lord will strike you with swelling lesions, with fever, with burning heat, with thirst, and with sword, and with wind blast, and with withering, and they will pursue you, pursue you until you perish. Your heavens over your head will be copper, and the land beneath you will be iron. The Lord will make the rain of your land dust and dirt. From the heaven it will descend upon you until you are destroyed. The Lord will cause you to be struck down before your enemies. On the road you will go out against him, but on seven roads will you flee before him. And you will be a cause of terror to the kingdoms of the earth. Your carcasses will be food for every bird of the sky and the animal of the earth, and nothing will frighten them. The Lord will strike you with the boils of Egypt and with the hemorrhoids and with wet boils and dry boils of which you cannot be cured. The Lord will strike you with madness and with blindness and with confounding of heart. You will grope at noontime as a blind man gropes in the darkness, but you will not succeed on your way. You will be only cheated and robbed all the days and there will be no savior. You will betroth a woman, but another man will lie with her. You will build a house, but you will not dwell in it. You will plant a vineyard, but you will not redeem it. Your ox will be slaughtered before your eyes, but you will not eat from it. Your donkey will be robbed before you, but you will not return, but it will not return to you. Your flocks will be given to your enemies, and you will have no savior. Your sons and daughters will be given to another people, and your eyes will see and pine in vain for them, for all all the day long, your hand will be powerless. A nation unknown to you will devour the full, will devour the fruit of your ground and all your labor, and you will be only cheated and downtrodden all the days. You will go mad from the sight of your eyes that you will see. The Lord will strike you with foul boil on the knees and on the legs that cannot be cured from the sole of your feet to your crown. The Lord will lead you and your king whom you will set up over yourself, a nation you never knew, neither nor your forefathers, and you will work for the gods of others, of wood and of stone. You will be a source of astonishment, a parable, a conversation piece among the people where the Lord will lead you. You will take an abundant seed out of the field, but you will harvest little, for the locusts will devour it. You will plant vineyards and work them, but wine you will not drink and you will not gather in, for the worm will eat it. You will have olive trees throughout your boundaries, but you will not obtain anoint with your you will not anoint with oil, for your olives will drop. You will bear sons and daughters, but they will not be yours. For they will go into captivity. All your trees and the fruit of your ground, the chirping locust will impoverish. The stranger who is among you will ascend above you higher and higher, while you will descend lower and lower. He will lend to you, but you will not lend to him. He will be a head, but you will be a tail. All these curses will come upon you and pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed, because you will not have hearkened to the voice of the Lord your God to observe his commandments and decrees that he commanded you. They will be a sign and a wonder in you, in your offspring forever, because you did not serve the Lord your God amid gladness and goodness of heart when everything was abundant. Please note, remember at the very beginning of the Parsha, what was, what was commanded. You bring in the first fruits and then you... Praise God, you remember where you came from, where he brought you, and you be thankful about the abundance that he has provided for you. And then here we have, towards the end of our Parsha, because you did not deserve the Lord your God amid gladness and goodness of heart when everything was abundant. 
You weren't thankful. Instead, you chased after foreign gods. Instead, you walked in disobedience. And therefore, you will be accursed. Verse 48, So you will serve your enemies, whom the Lord will send against you, in hunger and in thirst, and nakedness, and without anything. He will put an iron yoke on your neck until he destroys you. The Lord will carry against you a nation from far and from the end of the earth, as an eagle will swoop a nation whose language you will not understand. A brazen nation will not be respectful to the old or gracious to the young. It will devour the fruit of your animals and the fruit of the ground until you are destroyed. It will not leave you grain, wine, or oil, offspring for your cattle or flocks of your sheep and goats. It will cause you to perish. It will besiege you in all your cities until the collapse of your high and fortitude walls in which you trusted throughout your land. It will besiege you in all your cities and in all the land which the Lord your God has given you. You will eat the fruit of your womb, the flesh of your sons and daughters, which the Lord your God had given you. In the siege and in distress that your enemy will destroy, distress you, the man among you who is tender and very delicate will turn selfish against his brother and the wife of his bosom and against the remaining children that he has let survive. Not to give even one of them the flesh of his children that he will eat, not leaving anything for him in the siege and distress, your enemy will distress you in all your cities. The tender and delicate woman among you who had never tried to set the sole of her foot on the ground because of the de delicacy and the tenderness will turn selfish against the husband of her bosom and against her son and daughter and against her after birth that emerges from between her legs and against her children whom she will bear for she will eat them in secret for lack of anything in the siege and distress that your enemy will distress in your cities please note my friends what's being pictured here is severe famine to the point where people would eat their own children and yes it has happened verse 58 if you will not be careful to perform the words of this Torah that are written in this book, to fear his honored and awesome name, Jehovah, your Elohim. Then the Lord will make extraordinary your blouse and blows of your offspring, great and the faithful blows and evil and faithful illness. He will bring back upon you all the sufferings of Egypt of which you were terrified, and they will cleave to you, even in the illness, any blow that is not written in the book of this Torah, the Lord will bring upon you. Until you are destroyed, you will be left few in number, instead of having been like the stars of heaven in abundance. For you will not have hearkened to the voice of the Lord your God, and it will be just as the Lord rejoiced over you to benefit you, multiply you, so the Lord will cause them to rejoice over you that make you perish and destroy you, and will be torn from, among, from upon the ground to which you come to possess it. The Lord will scatter you from among the peoples and from the end of the earth and to the end of the earth, and there you will work for gods of others whom you did not know, you or your forefathers of wood and of stone, and among these nations you will not be tranquil. There will be no rest for your soul, for your foot. There the Lord will give you a trembling heart, longing of the eyes and suffering of soul, for your life will hang in the balance, and you will be frightened night and day, and you not be sure of your livelihood. In the morning you will say, Who can give back last night? And in the evening you will say, Who can give back this morning? For the fright of your heart that you will fear, and in the sight of your eyes that you will see, the Lord will return you to Egypt in ships, on the way of which you said you shall never again see it. And there you will offer yourselves for sale for your enemies, as slaves and maidservants, but there will be no buyer. These are the words of the covenant that the Lord commanded Moses to seal with the children of Israel in the land of Moab, beside the covenant that he sealed with them in Horeb. My friends, as you notice, the 
curses are far larger than the blessings. You know, the blessing is everything you touch is going to be blessed. The food you raise, your children, everything. If you just walk in his ways. But the mountain of judgment that comes from those who would read who have known God and then they reject him and reject his ways is unthinkable. We have a few more verses here. We have eight verses of chapter 29 to read and then our Portia is done for this morning. Let's read the last eight verses. Moses summoned all Israel and said to them, You have seen everything that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his servants, and to all his land, the great trials that your eyes beheld, those great signs and wonders. But the Lord did not give you a heart to know, or eyes to see, or ears to hear until this day. I led you for forty years in the wilderness. Your garment did not wear out from among you, and your shoe did not wear out from among your foot. Bread you did not eat, and wine or intoxicant you did not drink, so that you would know that I am the Lord your God. Then you arrived at this place, and Sihon, king of Heshan, and Og, king of Bashan, went out towards us in battle. We smote them. We took their land and gave it to an inheritance to the Ribbonite and to the Gadite and to half the tribe of the Massites. You shall observe the words of this covenant. And you shall perform them so that you will succeed in all that you do. And that, my friends, is the end of the tour portion study for this week. Uh, I think we've only done one or two this year uh, because we weren't intentionally working through them. I just felt led, led to read this one this morning. And... Uh, Hopefully it was a blessing to you. Um, I thank you for listening and taking the time. I thank you for praying for the podcast. And I thank you so much to those of you who are willing to support the work that's being done here. That's all I have for you this morning. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time, God bless.